Hello, I'm Tomasz and thank you guys for sticking with me. It's the last talk, so some people might be already a bit tired. And today I want to convince you that, ask you and then maybe convince you that metals, which I will be talking about, can be your next IDE. Okay, so let's start with questions, obviously. So, uh, as Krzysztof previously, I have uh, the slide or chat room where you can ask your questions. I will have a slide at the end where those questions will pop up. So, I think that's pretty nice. Uh, it's just metals. You go to Slido and just type in metals, should be fine. Okay. So, first things, why am I here? So, I'm Tomasz, I should have said that. Uh, and I'm working in Virtus Lab in Krakow. Uh, and we are cooperating with uh, Scala Center to um, create metals. Not create, but more like uh, enrich it with more and more features. Scala Center is a non profit organization in Lausanne in, at EPFL that tries to make the Scala world, the Scala community better and we're helping them with that. Okay. And who's working on metals? There's actually a lot of people uh, contributing to metals, but first is Olaf, who's the author. Uh, he did most of the work and he, that work was pretty amazing. Uh, then there's Gabriela, who spends a lot of his free time contributing to metals. There's Marek, who's also from Virtus Lab. And uh, last but not least is uh, Jorge, who uh, did uh, a lot of work on Bloop, which uh, is really, metals wouldn't exist without Bloop, but I will be explaining everything uh, during the talk. So let's talk about metals. Why w will we create another ID or anything when we have IntelliJ? Well, there's this editor gap that there's obviously a lot of people, about probably 90% that work in IntelliJ with Scala, but in like the global developers world, that's not the case. So around 50% of people are using VS uh, code, so Visual Studio code. There's people using Visual Studio, Notepad++, and like IntelliJ is like 25%. So, uh, if you want to make people uh, try out Scala, you have to provide them tools that they know to make it easier for them to learn. So if you have to learn a new editor and a new language, that's a bit of a, a lot of work. But if you just have to learn a new language, that the entrance is a bit easier to the language. And how do we actually do it? So we do it via LSP. LSP is Language Server Protocol. And that is a protocol that enables any client, any editor client to connect to any backend server that explains the language to the client uh, using JSON RPC. So JSONs are sent to the server to ask for some features and they're sent back with the resulting information that the IDE can use to um, display, for example, completions or rename stuff. So this is all actually being done by Microsoft. It's open source, it's on GitHub, that specification. It has a no nice website, which is here. And uh, there's a lot of work going on there. There's multiple LSP servers and Metals is the one for Scala. So you can have your favorite language, Scala in this case, in any editor you want, at least from those six. So we have support for Visual Studio Code, we have support for Emacs, uh, Vim, Sublime Text, uh, Atom, and even Eclipse. Though so Eclipse is still, uh, there's some things to work out still the client implementation is not done, but we already have a plugin for Eclipse that you can just use and uh, easily uh, just have it all working with metals in Eclipse. 
Um, that, is, I, that was actually done by a contributor for, from Bolivia at Mundo and uh, he did a lot of work there. There's o almost all features implemented that we uh, extend the LSP with. So any features that are not in LSP, we have some of them, he added them. So that was a lot of really nice work. Uh, how does it all work? Obviously, if it's a JSON RPC, you just send requests uh, to and uh, back from the server. Uh, there's this nice uh, inspector tool that you can put any trace of the JSON messages that you can gather while work with methods, for example, and you can just put that into that inspector tool, which is alongside the uh, specification, and you can nicely visualize visualize that in a browser. So what is happening here is just like at the end the server uh, gets an initialized message, client uh, response, um, then there's communication back and forth and this is pretty simple and I think it's pretty amazing to, uh, it's because it is simple you can use it in a lot of different places and it's quite, uh, I'll talk about it later but we like six editors and there's other ways of using that. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, so what are the main pieces uh, in Metas? So for sure we need information about the build. How does it look? What are the dependencies? Uh, what compiler options there are? And that is known by the build tool. But in Scala world, there's a lot of them. So how can we do it? We actually support six build tools currently, uh, four of them automatically. Um, that is Mill, Gradle, SBT, and Maven. So if you have a build tool in your workspace and, we, and you open it in, uh, for example, in the VS Code extension or in MX, uh, then we detect that it is that build tool and we just automatically uh, enable it to import it. There's just a pop-up, you can click it and it's important and you have all the information the build tool has. Um, so the same, almost the same would be with Fury and Seed because both of those build tools generate a configuration for Bloop, which is the thing that enables us to provide support for all of those languages. So all of those languages have some way to create configuration files for Bloop. And Bloop is a Scala build server. Uh, it works uh, via another very similar protocol called uh, build server protocol. And it gives us all the information we might need about the build tool. Um, so it also allows us to uh, compile things and uh, it uses those JSON configuration files that are uh, created in the uh, build tools to start and have those are the information from the build tool and it uses it to run. So then it serves that information to any client, the BSP client, in this case, metals. Okay, so that is an example of how a build import. We just open a workspace, there's a pop-up, we're running SPT uh, bloop install, which is the command that creates the JSON configuration files, and it just works. It is, obviously it needs to load SPT, which takes a while, but now, now it works. So if it's a simple workspace, that would be much faster. But now we have uh, completions. Uh, we can use uh, everything that an uh, LSP provides. OK, so another piece to the puzzle is semantic information. So we want semantic information to create some indexes and to um, get information about the code that we don't need to get from a compiler. So. Uh, but in Scala world, that's usually done with semantic DB, but we need to compile the code to uh, get the proper uh, information from semantic DB. So that's also helpful with Bloop. Bloop is very helpful in that because it's a hot compiler, it's jitted, so it uh, runs 
uh, all the time and it uh, allows us to just send the request to compile thing and it quickly uh, compiles that produces the semantic DB file and we have all the information we need, the semantic information we need in metals. Um, it also had the, another plus of Bluebis that we will get from diagnostics, we will get the same uh, information as we would get from uh, any build tool that we are using normally. So it Blue has the exact same class path, the exa exact same uh, compiler options as the uh, other build tools. So you will have the same errors uh, in your metals uh, extension or in, in any editor you're using. So there will be exactly the same um, messages, error messages. Okay, so that's an example. So it works, obviously, when it does need to work on safe, uh, but it's pretty fast and actually it's much less confusing than having uh, errors all the time popping up. Uh, so it's pretty nice and works pretty fast thanks to Bloop. Uh, it needs to compile the whole workspace at the start, uh, but that is also not a very big issue. And later on, it, Bloop uses Zinc underneath, so it's all incremental and works pretty neat. Okay, so that's the second piece uh, of what we need to build metals. The last piece is uh, obviously the compiler, the Scala presentation compiler. Uh, we want to get some information that the compiler only knows, so for completions, for some uh, go to definitions uh, inside, uh, for example, a file that is not yet saved. Uh, and we are using the Scala presentation compiler for that. And it needs to be correct. The information we get from the presentation compiler needs to be correct and it needs to be fast. Uh, the Scala compiler. Uh, the uh, presentation compiler can be added to any of your tools by just uh, adding Scala compiler to your dependencies. Uh, it's already used by multiple tools, so it's <laughs> tested. It's used by Ammonite, it's used in REPL, it was used in Scala IDE. Um, and it already implements some basic completions, that is scope and member completions. Scope is whatever you're just click, like write anything inside any place and you just want a completion. Uh, member are if you do it after a dot, that's the member one. And it is actually quite fast, but we wanted to make it faster. So we reuse the presentation compiler uh, until it gives us some bad information because actually reusing it all the time might at some point corrupt the state. There's a lot of mutable state inside and also it's very difficult to keep all the information that are coming in an interactive environment to be correct all the time. So, but we cache it nevertheless because that enables us uh, to uh, shorten the request from around 90 milliseconds uh, to 40 milliseconds with an old cache uh, presentation compiler. Uh, another thing we do is we disabled most compiler plugins because uh, a lot of them actually don't influence anything that editor is doing. So any completions, uh, any go to definition, it doesn't actually influence them. There's only two that we enabled, that is better monadic force and uh, kind projector, which um, they influence uh, how we do completions. So they needed to be there and they will test it. Uh, if you want to add another plugin, we can add it in metals via PR and test it, make sure it, all, it is all working. We don't want to just enable anything because um, obviously most of them don't, we don't even need them. So if we enable every uh, compiler plugin that, that is much uh, longer response times from the presentation compiler and uh, it just not needed. Um, the other thing is we disabled black box macros because black box macros uh, don't the, they don't change the way we use uh, completions also because uh, we know what type they are uh, we don't need to uh, analyze what they're doing at all uh, for white box uh, ones we still need to keep them but uh, removing the black box uh, black, black Black book macros uh, was um, giving us, in some cases, around 200 milliseconds better times for requests in some complex scenarios. 
So uh, that's another thing that we use to make it faster. Uh, last thing is cancellation. So if you send a lot of requests to the uh, to metals uh, the, to this LSP server, then all those uh, requests are then uh, computed one by one there in a queue. But uh, because in an editor you usually just want the results of the last one, we actually, if there's a lot of different requests, we just drop them and give you the results of the last one. Because if you operate in an editor, you're getting completions, uh, something didn't work, and you're quickly getting new completions, then you're probably not interested in the older ones. So we, that actually makes it much more uh, snappy and faster. Uh, and obviously, uh, completions probably are not the case because they're really quick uh, inside of metals. So that's all like three main components of what makes metals tick. Uh, we get the build tools, which uh, work because we uh, generate configuration from uh, each build tool for Bloop. We have semantic information from uh, Semantic DB. Uh, we use the Scala representation compiler, which is uh, fast and correct because whenever there's any issues with it, we just uh, restart. So that works. And all of those features you see in the green are implemented and are working. Those are LSP uh, features that you can check on the specification website. Uh, we have some upcoming release and there's some features already uh, available in the snapshot. So that's go to implementation, code lens, run and test. So all that is only available in the latest snapshots. But uh, let's see what's going on. So how metals look like. So we, we have the completions, as I was saying. The basic completions come from the presentation compiler itself, but they're very simple. They're not sorted properly. There's nothing m very magical there. So we added a lot of nice ones. So we, for example, we, when you want to complete uh, something that is not in scope, we auto import that. Uh, we have exhaustive matches on case classes. Uh, there's a lot of more that you can try out uh, when uh, trying out metals. Uh, and it's actually, I'm using metals to code on metals. So that is pretty, uh, it, they are pretty nice actually. Okay, uh, next one. This is an example from uh, ACA code base and uh, so in LSP, you get the possibility to go to a definition of a symbol. So here we go to the definition of actor ref. Uh, and then you can actually also find references. It's very similar to how it's done in IntelliJ, that if you uh, go to a definition, use the shortcut for go to definition on a definition, you just find references. And that is actually 2,000 references found. So it takes a while, like less than a second, but it just finds 2,000 definitions, all not cached. Uh, we have in indexes, but uh, everything is computed on the fly and works pretty uh, good. We use, for that, we use the semantic DB information to create the indexes for that, and um, I think it works pretty well. Okay. So next, so we also have formatting. So we use Scala FMT uh, for basic file formatting. LSP also provides two different formatting types. So on type formatting, which is after you click uh, any kind of a key, uh, which we use here, for example, if you hit enter and you're in a formatted string, we automatically add pipes. There's also range formatting uh, that uh, is basically on paste formatting. So whenever you paste anything, then you can format uh, that part. And we add pipes uh, also on paste, which works pretty neatly. And it's very similar to how uh, IntelliJ does this. And uh, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel since that worked pretty well. Okay, uh, let's go through maybe some, uh, some of the editors uh, that are supported. Uh, this is Vim. Um, I don't have much to, to talk about because I actually haven't used Vim for that. I am not a Vim person. I actually use v VS uh, Code, so Visual Studio Code, that all the examples previously were in Visual Studio Code. 
Uh, there's Emacs, there's, uh, uh, for Vim we use Nail Vim, I think. There's a lot more information on the website, so if you're interested in any of those editors and how exactly to set them up, you should uh, take a look at the website. I'll give the link at the end. Uh, so Emacs, I think that's LSP mode, uh, there's Atom, um, don't remember exactly which uh, plugin that is, but I just wanted to show you some of uh, the editors we have. Uh, there's Sublime, um, haven't used Sublime in a while, but it is still supporting metals. Uh, there is also Eclipse, which uh, this is actually working pretty well. Uh, there's obviously not everything implemented, but uh, this is really nice because uh, there's actually a lot of people still using Eclipse. They, they don't want to change and uh, the, for them to be able to use any of the new uh, features that we developed out of the box, it's uh, pretty amazing. And because decoupling the server from the client gives us the possibility to just support so many different editors. Um, you can also, there's this new thing called Eclipse Thea, which is very similar to uh, how uh, VS Code infrastructure uh, looks. Uh, it's just more extensible and it's actually available on the web. So you can go into a browser and it also works with metals. So the funny thing about Eclipse Thea is that it works with any VS Code extension, at least any that I tested. And Metals, you can just use that too with uh, VS Code, uh, I mean with Thea. Uh, to try that out, you can go either to the long, very long uh, uh, example or the tiny URL, which I uh, created here. That will redirect you to Gitpod, that, uh, because Thea is just the editor, it needs someone to actually put it somewhere on the web. And Gitpod is this uh, service that uh, gives you an ability to open any GitHub repository in a Docker image and just work on it. So I set up everything very quickly and uh, metas actually work inside Gitpod. So if you have the configuration in your repository, you can just open it in Gitpod and start working. Uh, additionally, you can also uh, pre-populate the images, so you can create uh, Docker images with indexes uh, already created, with uh, everything compiled, and if you open it, and there, you don't have to do anything. There's some additional stuff I did, so I download SPT, I download Bloop, so that it's all a very much nicer experience. Um, so the only thing you need to do there is uh, allow GitHub to, uh, Gitpod to access your email. So I think that's fine. Um, additional thing I, I really haven't yet tried, uh, Gitpod allows you to open any PR inside of a Docker image. So you can check uh, what's going on there and use metals for that. So it can really increase your, um, ability to review better and review much better with that. So if you want to try it out, there's the tiny URL, which is actually the above URL. Uh, there's the uh, GitHub repository that also has the link. Okay, so that's how it looks. You can see that it's a browser and uh, everything works the same as it worked with Eclipse, with Visual Studio Code uh, and I mean, I, it didn't take a long time, so kudos to guys at uh, Thea and Gitpod because it really wasn't much of an effort to make it work. Uh, there's different ways you can set it up for teams and uh, there's this whole another thing which I don't want to talk about yet, uh, which is Eclipse Che, which uses Thea for an editor experience. As you can see, it's very similar also the uh, editor uh, to the VS Code one. It's because they use exactly the same editor that is uh, Monaco editor, I think. Uh, so it, that's why it's very similar. The infrastructure underneath is more different. It's more extensible, actually. Uh, everything is an extension there. Also, and there's a plugin extension that enables all the VS Code extensions. So they, they were pretty smart about it. Okay, 
I was thinking that there are some new things available in the snapshot. Uh, so let's see what they are. So I was saying that we use semantic DB for uh, creating uh, files with the semantic information. And the problem is I, we needed to add a plugin for that, a uh, compiler plugin. And to add a compiler plugin in each build tool is a bit different, and sometimes it's even not possible to do it automatically. So we actually moved all that, guessing what uh, compiler plugin we need to Bloop. So now Metal just informs Bloop that I want that version of the compiler plugin, and please just download it and use that for any build. And you don't actually have to do much now besides the imports, because we had some issues when uh, in more complex builds, uh, it was not possible to do everything automatically, especially at the compiler plugin. So uh, that really uh, smoothens the initial experience for a lot of developers. Uh, another thing which was recently uh, implemented is go to implementation. So whenever you're on a method, you can go to uh, all the methods that implement it. Or uh, if you are on a, have a course in a class, you can go to every class that implements that. We built a new index for that, uh, but there's no actual increase in time uh, of indexing because we actually do it at the same time as the previous index for references and works with overloaded methods, works uh, with um, um, generic types. We have a lot of tests, so hopefully it works for everything, but I cannot say until there's more people using it and it's still in the snapshot, so not everybody is using that. Uh, it works for workspace symbols and also for library symbols, although for library symbols you need to load the whole information about the uh, class path. You need to load all the symbols from the class path to know exactly how the inheritance inside of the um, class path. So, for example, of that would be if you have a Scala exception, you don't actually know that it's Java exception underneath and that runtime exception uh, extends that. So, if you have both runtime exception and exception, inside of your code, you will not know that they inherit from each other because both are uh, not available in the scope, so you need to load the information. That takes a bit uh, on the, at the first time, so, but it works pretty nice. Uh, there's an example here, so that's also an ACA. Uh, we are fine, it works for uh, also type definitions, uh, so you can see type receive uh, works for the trait, it just found 548 implementations, and I think it's pretty snappy. Uh, again, we're not caching the results anywhere, we're just uh, using the index to get uh, uh, all the implementations. So I, I think that's pretty nice and fast. Um, last thing I wanted to talk about is DBIC adapter protocol. So that finishes our tree of protocols. That, that one is from also from Microsoft. It creates a generic interface for clients to interact with a debugger. We implemented the actual debugger inside of Bloop and Metal uh, serves as a proxy for Bloop. And um, next release will only have run or test because that's also done via uh, debug adapter protocol, but we are also working on breakpoints which I will show shortly. This is a short diagram that's available in the in GitHub repo, but basically how it works is uh, that we ask in Metals, we ask Bloop what are the main classes or test classes. We get the information. Metals knows more about the code where it all works to put lenses. Lenses are just sh short annotation that you can click on above some of your code. Uh, here it's just run or test. You can click on run and test and that uh, forwards everything to Bloop, which sets up the session, the debugging session, and Metas just uh, connects you to the debugging session and the client just uh, prints the, that information. But let's see how it works. So here's an example of just counting. So it creates the lens. You can see it's between lines three and four. Uh, and you can run and it just but especially it's really nice because every, all of that co code is compiled because Bloop compiles it all the time 
And because of that, it's actually very fast to run anything. And I actually uh, was, uh, when I was looking into the ACA code base, I was just randomly suddenly clicking on tests and they were working, which was pretty amazing. And we were pretty fast. So it's a much better experience if you're looking to a uh, code, uh, especially if you can actually build every index and compile it before, uh, for example, in Gitpod. But there's more. So we, as I said, we are working on um, adding more so for breakpoints and we actually have it working. We still need to make it a bit uh, more resilient, a bit faster, but it actually works. It uh, prints uh, local variables, you can go inside uh, code, uh, like library code. Uh, so Metal is becoming actually an ID that you can use instead of IntelliJ and it's much faster. Although IntelliJ will always provide some some features that we are not able to do via LSP, but I think this is a totally like adds some value that IntelliJ cannot, so you can just use that uh, alongside. I know people who just use IntelliJ for some long running projects and uh, VS Code with methods for, for some. Uh, um, GitHub repositories, they just want to get uh, a look at, go around the code, maybe fix something, because they don't want to set up the IntelliJ for that. So there's different ways to use that. I, I use for main, as a main editor uh, and it works pretty neat. Okay, next on the roadmap, we want to implement the type, go to type definition. Uh, which is not really that uh, important, but uh, for Emacs users, it always confuses them because there's, their commands are very similar and uh, it's actually not working if you do go to type definition instead of go to definition, which it can be very confusing, so we're working on that. So it will go to the type of the definition you're at. Uh, we work on rename symbol, which will just rename any symbol in your workspace. I, I think I almost like 70% finished with that. Uh, debugging with breakpoints, you've already seen that. Uh, we want a better test interface, so not just uh, printing everything in uh, the debugging console, because that's how it currently works, so like it would work in SBT, for example. We want it to be displayed nicely in the editor, for some, um, similar to the Python extension for VS Code, for example. Uh, we also want to add, for example, watch, so if any um, part of the code changes, you, it would recompile and run the test again, so that this is a very nice uh, workflow that you can have while working. Um, there's, we're working on the DOTI support. We've actually worked uh, last month with Martin Odersky to make sure that we get all like DOTI inside metals. Um, we have a PR ready that uh, allows for some uh, basic things to work. Um, which is completions, but everything is very bare bones as it would work inside of the Doty uh, ID, Doty LSP server. Uh, so we just ported that. Uh, additionally, uh, the Doty team is working on adding a flag for semantic DB to create it uh, using a flag. So if you add the semantic DB flag, it will just uh, create uh, semantic DB files from Doty. So everything that uses semantic DB information inside of metals like go to implementation or uh, go to definition or um, references will also work pretty uh, nicely. And also it will use Bloop. So the infrastructure will be the same and you'll be able to have a single Doty project inside of your workspace and like Scala 212 uh, will be all the rest of the projects and it will be possible. And uh, we also have a PR for Pants support. Pants uh, is the build from Twitter. And we want to work on worksheets, which uh, a lot of people want. Uh, as we were also talking with Martin, he wants that for the students uh, to use worksheets. And we want to develop a really nice uh, so experience for people who want to just quickly prototype uh, something. Okay, you can take a look at the uh, things that we want to work at and you can vote. 
on uh, the, another repository called Meta's feature request. Uh, everything in that repository actually gets summed up in an issue in the main repository, but you can vote on everything in the features repository. And uh, the, obviously, it's, for example, refactoring is very high on the list here, but uh, we'll not be doing all the refactoring at the same time. We will be probably doing rename, we'll be doing some stuff. So it's mo a lot more advisory because sometimes we'll do something that is less voted, but it's much easier for us to do. And, uh, but we take into account everything that is there. We try to respond to any issues you might have. Uh, so if you reach out to us on uh, any GitHub repository for metals uh, or the metals VS code extension or the Eclipse extension, we try to respond. Uh, you can talk to us on Discord, so you can explain what you think is best to um, make to do the next feature. So uh, you can take a look there. And uh, there's uh, Olaf, did, uh, Olaf, the author of Metals, did uh, talk on Scala Days, which you should also probably work. It's probably better than mine, but uh, uh, I still <laughs> recommend that. Uh, the, the, my presentation is available uh, under the link, the slides.com. Uh, there's metal documentation, bloop documentation, and you can catch me on Twitter. But I promised questions, so I, I hope it will work. Ah, okay. What is the argument to switch to um, metals? What would it be? Uh, for me, it was much faster experience. So completions work much faster. Whenever uh, I open VS Code, it just opens and it works. Well, in it, it, if you're working on a project for days and you never shut down your computer, it's fine. But uh, I, I often like change to another computer, uh, switch, uh, switch it on, and. And if you want to open multiple repositories, it will just work very quickly. So, and there's a lot more possibilities to make it even quicker. So you can cache some information, uh, like the blue metadata, you can cache that and uh, allow any developers, uh, developer in your company to actually um, have a much quicker, better experience, even in a browser. So that, that is pretty amazing. Gitpod allows you to pre-build images so you can have everything populated. You just open it and it works. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, it works uh, with Java code. It compiles it. There's not completions because uh, there's not a way uh, for LSP servers to actually interact with each other yet. We also want to focus on that because there's uh, Java uh, LSP and it actually provides everything for Java, but we want to make sure that uh, we can make it work together with the Scala LSP. So there's some basic support, so you'll get compilers, but no completions, and um, I think references are also not working. So uh, Java, Java code is obviously problematic, but we're, uh, it is one of our priorities to make it work together. So. There's a lot of contributors who are interested uh, in metals and they often come up and say, I want to implement that. And uh, usually if they have, we, we don't want, obviously if somebody just have a weekend off and want just to use one weekend to implement something, we don't want that because we want every of those implemented features to be uh, maybe not perfect, but at least working really well. So we want most, Big features require a lot of commitment of your time. But any small features, uh, welcome to uh, shout if you want to do it. And yeah. uh, there's some uh, tutorials uh, for uh, new contributors on the uh, Metals website. So scalameta.org slash metals, there's a contributors site. Um, but for sure, if you want to uh, ask us any question, you can do it currently on Discord. I think there's the Scala Meta um, uh, chat room server. Uh, I think that's the uh, naming is server. And there's uh, the Metals uh, chat room there. There's uh, different uh, rooms for each of the editors. Um, so you can ask any questions you have also about contributing. We already have some people contributing from outside, totally outside that we uh, never like met and they're doing a lot of great work. There's, I think, Chris that uh, 
is doing some work on making, uh, implementing um, abstract method automatically, which I really need actually, uh, while working on methods in methods, I sometimes uh, create uh, features and then reuse them to uh, work on it. Uh, but yet yeah, you can, if there's not enough information, we should probably give more information into the documentation. There is some, but we want to make it as welcoming experience as, po as it is possible. Uh, but if there's something that is not entirely clear, you can reach out to us. Uh, we still also go on Gitter, but I think most people want to move to Discord. Uh, but yeah. Uh, is there IntelliJ plugin for Metals? Not yet. Apparently they're working on some LSP support, but you need, uh, there's uh, also an LSP plugin, but it's not very well, working very well. Uh, but the only thing we actually need is uh, an LSP client so that we, IntelliJ knows how to display the information that it gets from LSP. And that I think needs to be done by the JetBrains guys, and I'm not sure how much they want that. So uh, it's, I heard they're doing some kind of an LSP support, so it's not like out, like IntelliJ guys are doing amazing work. Like there's some features we're pretty sure we'll not be able to implement in Metals, but um, there's, uh, they're still contributing to the community. They try to contribute to the community, and I'm, they're doing a great job there. Okay. Is there any questions from the audience? Sorry? There was other questions. You just see the latest question. I saw some. Oh, there's questions. six. Damn. I need to use my laptop then. Okay. What would I lose if I switch from TJ idea to Metals on Savius Code? I mean, I don't think you would lose anything, but for example, the implicit uh, hints will not be there. The, the, all the rage um, type errors will not be there because we don't really have yet an ability to show that uh, using LSP. Uh, but uh, I mean, other than that, uh, I think we wouldn't lose much. I mean, you should try it yourself. You can try on Git, but you just click the link, it opens the workspace and you can try it out. So it's really not much effort. And for anybody learning Scala, that, like sending them the link, hey, you got a workspace here. Uh, you don't have to set up anything at all, JVM, nothing. So uh, it will just work out of the box. So I mean, you can try it out, okay. Uh, will MX have all the features you have in VS Code? I am not sure if run debug is supported, but most other things are. So uh, it all depends on the plugin, the LSP mode plugin. Uh, so if things, there's people interested in doing some stuff, for example, implementing a way to work with DAP, then uh, I mean, it will be probably most likely be implemented. Like there's a lot of people working, especially Vim and Emex have a very lively community. So I'm pretty sure most of the things will be available at some point. Okay. Well, Emex. Okay, I think that's all questions. Then, any more from the audience? Yeah. Okay. When you were saying that uh, implicit hints don't work, do implicit completions work? Like when you have implicit classes and then it gives the, you completions? The completions, uh, right? I'm not sure uh, what's it. When I have an implicit class yes. and then it's methods, I can mm. use on the class nested in the implicit class, right? You can use anything, it's just we don't give you the hints like the IntelliJ does. Like for example, if you have implicit uh, values, it will show us uh, like... All right, okay. okay, okay. That's it. Okay, any more questions? Okay, I think not. If you want to ask questions, you can catch me. I'll be here until tomorrow, actually until the day after that, but the day after that, I'll be leaving at 7 a.m. So, okay. All right. so shout out to my company. They, uh, they let me come here and they paid for me. So uh, thank you. Uh, 
I mean, Chris already said we're doing a lot of stuff. We're trying to do our best for the community, especially Scala community, but we're also working with Kotlin. Uh, we're doing some Java stuff. Uh, we're doing some Python stuff. I mean, we're doing a lot of different things. And uh, yeah, thank you for attending.